just give me your, your your general thoughts on Isra Adesanya versus Marvin Vittori. Like, who do you think is going to win? Like, who, who are you picking in general for that fight? So it's kind of tough for me because I don't remember watching the last time they fought, and I know yeah, they me fought. neither. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know I know Marvin had some takedowns, and I know he he had a pretty good fight against them, but yeah. I don't remember even how that fight went, and I think. Both guys have gotten better since then, yeah. but in in my opinion, I, I just think Adesanya has proven that he's the champ, and regardless of coming off a loss to Jan Blachowicz, I think at 185, he is the best guy right now, yeah. aside, I mean, Whitaker is insane, like, Whitaker is one of my favorite fighters to watch, just because he's so damn good, mm. and he put on a great performance against uh, Kelvin Gastelum, who I love watching also, yeah. Kel- Kelvin's a man. But, I mean, that's it's a stacked division. But I just I just think Adesanya is just too much for Vittori. I so think, I mean, that's that's really all I have for that in, rematch. For Vittori, if he, I mean, if he he's likely not gonna win a striking battle or all, all stand up fight with him. Though Jan Blachowicz did a lot better than people think. I would assume though for Marvin, just like Jan did late in that fight to to win the mm-hmm. fight, he's got to use his striking. To work to his grappling and and yeah. you are as good a grappler as there is in the, the the sport and like you mentioned talking about with mark henry you've c- continued to evolve your striking what, what would how do you would you explain it and how would you say he needs to use his striking to set up his grappling what kind of things technically do you think he would need to do especially for someone with adesanya's reflexes and skills and mm-hmm. speed well i think a lot of it has to come down to reaction so mm-hmm. his reaction time on whether he's going to set his shots up off of Adesanya's offensive strikes hmm. or if he's going to set it up off of his offensive strikes. So there's, you know, those are the two ways that you can really score. It can be, it can never just be a wide open shot from 10 feet away, yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. against a guy with that, yeah. that kind of range and yep. that kind of precision on his striking. So, um, you know, setting up your level changes and your fakes as you, as you're trying to, especially a guy like Adesanya, you have to be faking on him all the time and make him aware that you're not afraid to get dirty and, and get in a, a shot mm. from, you know, against the fence or maybe take a shot to get to the fence. You know, take a cup, take a punch here or there to try and get close enough to get him to the cage maybe. Right. Maybe it's not even a shot. Maybe it's just, you know, barrages of punches to get him to the fence and then work from there mm, but yeah against a guy who's that long i mean he's definitely got an advantage on reach and length on him so i wouldn't really want to stand against the cage and have him just do the splits against the cage and try and take him down yeah um uh, you know working those open cage takedowns like khabib always does and try and get him down in the middle of the cage and there's just a lot of different things that he can do and if you're going to go off of your defense, which would be off of Adesanya's offensive strikes, you have to set up your own strikes first and get him to counter back so you know the timing of the counter right. for your shot. So, I mean, that's that's the main thing I would say because we know that he could take him down, but it's just the timing of the takedown is everything. Yeah. And it's always fractions of an inch and, uh, you know, milliseconds of – timing that go go into it all i mean if you're off a half second or uh you know half of an inch it's the difference between a takedown or a knockout mm. and and people will look at marvin and look at jan and be like oh well you know they're kind of similar they're good strikers both good grapplers but yeah they're on that simple level they are but they're still very different fighters how and i don't know if you've been in this position where you're facing a guy someone beat him with a certain kind of blueprint that maybe you could use like is it easy to, to for Marvin Vittori to go okay this is what Jan can did I can do it can you can you look for certain things especially if the, the person's gonna work on those things try to fix them or is it kind of hard because you have your own style you are your own fighter is it hard to just follow someone else's blueprint to beat someone you know in a similar way I think the I think I would say the biggest thing is even if somebody has a similar style as you, as you, mm-hmm. or as the style that you want to implement, everybody has a little bit different timing, a little bit different body movement, mm-hmm. um, awareness. Um, there's a lot of different things that go into that. But when I think about it, you can use some things, maybe 
the way they set up the shot or the way that they're trying to close the distance or, you know, if he's going back and looking at how Jan did a lot of things really well, you have to remember Jan's a giant compared yeah. to the 185ers. Yeah. So a lot of things that he did, even if he, you know, just bullied them strength wise, that's stuff that Marvin is not going to be able to yeah. do as well. But he's he faster, super... so maybe he could do different things. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So there's always there's always going to be little ways that you could tweak certain things to make it mm. work for you to try and emulate the same attack that you're either watching on film or whatever. Versus Marvin Vittori. Just general thoughts on that fight. Who do you think is going to win that fight? Do you see anybody with better, more specific advantages than the other one? You know, um, I think. I mean, I really think Adam is, is going to do, do it again. I, mean, I think he, he outclassed him last time. I was surprised it was a split decision last time. Hmm, okay. That, that, uh, the scoring of it. I mean, I didn't see, really see it that way. Um, but, you know, I I, I mean, I, we, now we see that, you know, if, 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 well, I can't even pronounce his name. Vittori. Marvin Vittori. Vittori, yeah. Yeah. Vittori. Um, I, 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 re- I actually went back and rewatched their first fight, and I'm okay. like, you know, he's he's really gonna have to try to get out there and take him down more. Yeah, because he can't stand out there and strike with them. If he yep. stands out there and them, if he stands out there and strikes with them, I think this fight he gets knocked out. If he stands out there, if he does, he fights the same way he did last time. He needs to come out and take him down. Yep. I mean, he, they were talking in that fight about he didn't want to rush out, and your other other guys made the mistake of trying to take him down too fast. And, uh, I think that he really needs to get out there and take him down. <laughs> get, get on top of him and, and, get, and take him down before he's tired, you know, because it seemed like he took him down a few times in the third round, but was that was, was still mm-hmm. tired. So, um, uh, because like, in that last fight, Adam Sia was, I mean, I, to me, it wasn't so much that he, like, it wasn't, he just, did, he doesn't have a lot, lot in his toolbox to get off his back mm. yeah. and get off the bottom. And uh, I mean, he, I mean, I'd love to show him a few things to help him out, <laughs> but. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, it's seriously, like, it, it didn't look like he wasn't trying. It just looked like he didn't know what to do down there. Almost. Yeah. He was almost in a position like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit here and hopefully they, they stand us up. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, and he, he, you know, he's so athletic and so good at, at stand, get, not getting taken down. But if he gets taken down and makes a mistake, he needs to be able, he needs to be, be able to at least be, for me, it's like, it's not, it's one thing is if he was working to get up and he was trying to do things and it was getting stopped. Hmm. That's one thing, but it wasn't even like he didn't even. It felt to me like he didn't even know what to work for. Yeah, to get up. So, and you know, and that's a that's just a, an evolution thing. I mean, he, he needs to work on that a little bit. But I'm hoping that like he saw that and, and decided to get after it a little bit. Speaking, I mean, I'm glad you pretty brought that up because I, I talked to Lance Palmer and I, I kind of get that that point of view for Vittori where using your striking to get the takedown because i totally agree a thousand percent he needs to get the takedown so i'm trying to get the other perspective because you were one of those first great strikers that people thought oh the way to beat you is to take a, you know take you down and stuff like that but you had to dispel that and learn to shut that down punish opponents for thinking they could take you down you know like, like we said the his best chance of beating out of sign is the takedown technically what are the sort of things israel will need to do to avoid the takedowns is it fo- a footwork thing is it other things and when mar and does you know he probably at some point will be able to get him clinch him up against the cage what does israel need to do to defend and then separate you, you know uh, on his feet israel defends very well yeah yep. he does i mean for a guy that's not doesn't have a wrestling background he, he's he defends himself on his feet excellent like, yeah. he, he moves moves well he, he's hard he fakes a lot he's hard to, it's hard to stop um off the cage and he's gonna pivot it out he, mm. he digs under he gets out he, he moves off all that is great. The, the tr- trouble with him is, is if he gets taken down, mm. it, like I said, the thing I, that I did really good was I, as soon as I hit the ground, I'm already starting it back up. Mm. I never, I never go, oh, you got me. <laughs> I mean, that's the worst thing. I, like I see that all the time. Guys, like, oh, I got taken out. Oh, I got taken yeah. out. That just that little, oh, yeah, that's him get set. And like I got for jujitsu buddies, I, if I let him get set, I mean, like that, all you do is sit there and wait. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna push on them a little bit and just wait. They're, they're not gonna, it's gonna take too much energy to get them off me. They're not gonna. Yeah. If they want to just sit there and latch on, it's just okay, okay. But what mm. do I do? But if right when I hit the ground, I already start moving. They they, they don't get to get set, mm. get set in that position. So now they're still fight. They're still fighting. I make them fight to hold me down. Yeah. Right. Because if you're if you're constantly fighting to keep me down, uh, it makes it a lot easier to get up. Uh, and and you're also not trying to hurt me or finish me. Right. 
And there's that kind of stuff that fighting to get up that that opens the door to the scrambles and and, and all those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, it opens the scramble and it opens and you know and, and it allows you to get out. Like uh-huh. kinda, for me, a lot of stuff I did was like, I'll let you hit me, you hit me, but you hit me one time and I'm out. If you mm. let go, if you let go of me to hit me, I'm gonna pop out while you're hitting me. Yeah. So so I was trying. I try to get, but it's just trying to get get that motion. But I mean, I think he does a great job with his feet. I mean, I think I, he scrambles real well. He's, it's hard to take down. He just when he, when he does get taken down, it's you know mm. it just seems like it, it just kind of stops. 